Hey everyone, Kyo here. Today I'm comparing the M4 iPad Pro versus the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 series tablets for drawing purposes. And this review will be from the perspective of an urban sketcher, me, someone who enjoys sketching outdoors on location under bright lighting conditions. So today I'm back again at the same location where I reviewed the M4 iPad Pro a few days ago. And if you have not watched that review, the link is in the video description below. Just a warning, that review is 50 minutes long. On this table, I have the 11-inch M4 iPad Pro and there is also, of course, the 13-inch option. And this is the 14.6-inch Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra and the other two sizes are 11-inch and 12.4-inch. So let's talk about the design first. I prefer the aspect ratio of the iPad, which is around 4 by 3 because this is more usable in both landscape and portrait orientation and sometimes I do draw in portrait orientation. So with portrait orientation on the iPad Pro, this is less narrow and if you have user interface by the side, you will still get more space to work with for drawing. For the Tab S9 series tablets, the aspect ratio is 16 by 10. So they are great if you use them in landscape orientation but if you use them in portrait orientation. For the Samsung tablets, the width is definitely more narrow in portrait orientation compared to the length. And this is not so much of an issue if you are using the 14.6 inch tablet because there is a lot of space to work with. However, if you are using a smaller 11 inch or 12.4 inch tablet, you will really start to feel how narrow the canvas space is. So let me show you an app that has more UI elements. Uh, this is Minibank Paint. So once you have the column of palette by the side, you can start to feel how narrow this canvas space is. So if you use apps with lots of UI elements such as Minibank Paint, Krita, Clip Studio, the more squarish aspect ratio is going to be better. As for which tablet size to get, it's quite simple actually. You just have to ask yourself, when you are using the tablet, are you going to be holding it more often compared to putting the tablet on the table, on your lap, or on some support? The keywords are when you are using the tablet. I'm not talking about bringing the tablet around. If you have to hold the tablet in hand for long periods of time, the 11 inch is a very clear winner. And that's the main reason why I switched from using a 12.9 inch iPad Pro to the 11 inch because when sketching outdoors sometimes I have to stand and sketch sometimes for an hour or even two hours. The 12.4 inch, 14.6 inch Samsung tablets and the 13 inch iPad Pro in my opinion are more of tabletop tablets. Now you can use them by holding them in hand but the thing is when you're holding such a huge tablet in hand you have to balance the whole tablet and when you're holding the tablet in landscape orientation, you have to balance this whole weight and it is very tiring. Let's talk about display quality. The M4 iPad Pros are using tandem OLED where there are two OLED layers and the display can produce up to 1000 nits brightness which is sufficiently bright for use even outdoors under bright sunny conditions. And that is the reason why I upgraded from the previous M2 model with 600 nits brightness over to this with 1000 nits brightness. As for the Samsung Tab S9 tablets, the SDR brightness is up to 420 nits. Now when you're using the tablet indoors, there is not going to be any difference. They both look really bright indoors. But when you use them outdoors, that is really when you can see the extra brightness with the M4 iPad Pro and also the extra contrast. Let's look at how reflective these displays are. So both are glossy displays. The M4 iPad Pros can be purchased with the nano texture surface or glass, but that is an additional US $100 and you can only get that with the one terabyte and two terabyte models. The Samsung tablet does not have the anti-reflective coating. So right now it's actually reflecting the sky, which is very cloudy. So you can see this is almost white. As for the iPad Pro, not just with this model but with the previous models as well, there is the anti-reflective coating and you can see between the two 
the Samsung tablet has a more glaring surface due to the reflection. Samsung, in my opinion, missed a huge opportunity by not using anti-reflective coating on their tablets. This is how the tablet looks under direct sunlight, but the tablets are not facing the sun. So the Samsung tablet is actually quite bright, even at 400 over nits. From the top, um, the tandem OLED is definitely brighter. The Samsung OLED is not dim. It's actually quite bright. It's just that the reflection is is too much for me. It's really too much. Whereas on the tandem OLED, you can still clearly see the content on the display. With the M2 iPad Pro and the previous iPad Pros, the display would have dimmed by now because of the tablet overheating. But this tablet now it's really hot, but I don't see display dimming yet. So this is really impressive. The colors on both displays are vibrant. The viewing angles are terrific with minimal color shift and drop in brightness when viewed from extreme angles. This is so glossy and reflective. The resolution is high. I cannot remember the resolution for each tablet size except to say that the visuals are sharp and there is no pixelation noticeable from one arm's distance away. Refresh rate of the M4 iPad Pro is 120Hz but that can go as low as 10Hz when viewing static content so that should help conserve battery. So with 120Hz refresh rate, the animation when it comes to zooming in and out, scrolling, panning, browsing web pages, all those animations will be really smooth. Refresh rate of the Samsung tablet is also 120Hz and if I remember correctly, it can go down to 60Hz. Anyway, the animation when it comes to scrolling, zooming in and out, um, all that will be very smooth with 120Hz. These two displays have pulse wave modulation and people with sensitive eyes may be affected by pulse wave modulation, PWM. So if you're not sure whether your eyes are affected, it's best to look at the tablets yourself in real life at the stores. I've just adjusted the camera settings to capture the flickering and my eyes cannot see the flickering in the real world but there are people who are affected by PWM. Both displays are laminated so when drawing there is no gap between the line and the pen tip. It always looks like the line is coming out from beneath the pen tip. There is no cursor misalignment regardless of how you hold the pen. So both the Apple Pencil Pro and the Samsung S Pen are very accurate. Let's look at the latency performance with Apple Pencil and this app is Procreate. Now this drawing speed is faster than my usual drawing speed and the gap between the line as it's trying to catch up with the pen tip is minimal. So latency performance is really good on the M4 iPad Pro. And this is the Samsung Tab S9 Ultra. The app I'm using is Infinite Painter because there is no Procreate from the Google Play Store and you can see the latency performance is also really good. Let's compare the pens. There are people who prefer the Apple Pencil and there are people who prefer the Samsung S Pen so it's really personal preference. But the Apple Pencil does provide more features. So the Apple Pencil Pro supports palm rejection, tilt sensitivity, pressure sensitivity, there is the new squeeze feature to call up shortcuts, there is still the double tap to call up shortcuts, and there is barrel rotation or barrel roll, which is a new feature. There is also the find my feature, which can help you locate your missing pen. For the Samsung S Pen, there is support for palm rejection, tilt sensitivity and pressure sensitivity. Now for the original pen, there is one side button here which you can customize uh, for shortcuts. You can also customize the squeeze and double tap for shortcuts. I'm not sure if you can see it, but the original S Pen tip is actually a soft tip and the Apple Pencil tip is a hard plastic tip. When drawing or writing with the Samsung S Pen, there is almost no sound or noise at all when the pen tip is hitting the glass display. 
and also the soft pen tip has more resistance on glass compared to the Apple Pencil so this will give you more control when you are drawing because the pen is not going to be that slippery on glass and this is the Apple Pencil Pro so as I draw I can hear the tapping sound but it's really a non-issue the plastic pen tip is definitely smoother on the glass compared to the Samsung S Pen. Now you can buy silicone pen tips which will give you more resistance. So uh, silicone pen tips will give you more control when drawing as well. Or you can get a matte screen protector to give you that tactile drawing experience. And you can do that with the Samsung tablet as well. Both pens have excellent support for pressure sensitivity. So I can draw very thin lines even with this thick brush. Right now I'm barely glancing the pen tip on the glass and I can draw the thin lines easily. So when you can draw thin and thick lines easily, you can create line variation that makes your line art look more interesting. Now the downside to the Samsung S Pen is even though there is tilt sensitivity, um, for this particular pen, if you tilt your pen too low, this plastic part will be in contact with the glass surface and it will not draw anymore. So this pen's design actually affects tilt sensitivity, which is why Samsung created another pen called the S Pen Creator Edition. So this new pen has a bigger tip and this area here is tapered in such a way that this new pen can be angled lower compared to the original pen. So this pen has better tilt performance now, but this is US $99. And this is not worth the money because there are other S Pen alternatives that cost less. The original S Pen is included with the purchase of the tablet, so that's great obviously. The Apple Pencil Pro is sold separately for US $129. One nice thing about the Samsung S Pen is it uses Wacom EMR so you can buy third-party alternative pens that also use Wacom EMR. Now the pressure performance for different pens will vary slightly but they will all support palm rejection, tilt sensitivity and pressure sensitivity. The other official pen supported by the M4 iPad Pro is the Apple Pencil USB-C which also supports palm rejection tilt sensitivity but there is no pressure sensitivity. Now there are third-party Apple Pencils out there but all of them will not support pressure sensitivity. Many of them will support palm rejection and tilt sensitivity but none of them will support pressure sensitivity. If you want to buy the M4 iPad Pro, you have to get the Apple Pencil Pro because it supports pressure sensitivity. And this is how you can draw thin and thick lines. And this is how you can create line variation to make your line art look more interesting. If you do not have pressure sensitivity, this is what you will get. So all the lines are uniform throughout. It's not going to be as interesting compared to having lines that are thin and thick. So this was a sketch that I drew a few hours ago at this corridor. After adding some colors it looks all right. This is the corridor by the way. Apple Pencil Pro can attach to the side of the iPad Pro for charging and for pairing. I cannot remember the battery life for the pen but battery life is not going to be an issue because it's always charged when you have it by the side of the tablet. I also like to use a case with a pen holder so that I will not accidentally dislodge the pen. The Samsung S Pen can attach to the side of the tablet as well and also to the back of the tablet. So this is the official Samsung case so you can keep it here and it will not dislodge. There is a battery inside for some Bluetooth features but this pen does not need battery power for drawing and for writing. Let's look at the apps available from the Google Play Store and there are many wonderful apps available. These are just some of the many drawing apps available. There is Clip Studio Paint which is the desktop version ported over to Android and iPad also has the same 
version. This is Krita, which is also the desktop version. This app will work well on larger tablets. So if you use Krita, you have to get a tablet that is at least 12.4 inch or 14.6 inch. There is Medibank Paint. Concepts is my favorite drawing app. Infinite Painter is really good. Apple App Store has many wonderful drawing apps as well and there are probably more drawing apps here compared to what you can find in Google Play Store. So the most popular one is Procreate. There is also Photoshop, which is the tablet version, not the desktop version. Clip Studio is here. There is Medibank Paint and the new Medibank Pro. There is Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher, Sketchbook. Infinite Painter, Art Studio Pro, and all these apps are really good. The advantage of the iPad for visual content creators is there are more graphic design apps that can handle type, vector, and layout. So there is Adobe Illustrator, even though it's the tablet version, but it's still an The advantage of the iPad for visual content creators over getting an Android tablet is there are more graphic design apps that can handle typography, vector, and layout. So there is Adobe Illustrator. And even though this is the tablet version, it is still an awesome app for creating vector graphics. There is of course Affinity Designer. Concepts is a vector sketching app. There is Curve, Amadine, and Publisher for pitch layout. So artists definitely have a wider selection of drawing and graphic design apps on the iPad but there is no lack of good drawing apps on Android. The point here is if you want to create professional art, you can go with either tablet because the hardware is terrific and there are so many wonderful drawing apps. Let's talk about backup. On the Samsung tablet, there are three options to backup your artwork. There is Samsung Cloud, Google Drive, and external storage. There is a micro SD card slot even though the transfer speed is kind of slow. From what I have discovered, the backup options do not back up everything. So after you back up, you have to make sure that your artworks are actually backed up because I have tried to create a backup and when I transfer it to a new Samsung tablet, it didn't transfer some of the artworks from Infinite Painter over. So the backup options do not back up everything. On the iPad, there are two options to back up. You can back up to a computer, either Windows or Mac OS, or you can choose to use iCloud. Both options will back up everything, like everything. If you lose your tablet today and you buy a new tablet, you can restore everything from your backup. So for the Samsung tablet, you have to check whether your artworks are backed up after the backup process, and it will be very useful to know where your artworks are actually saved in the Android OS file system, because that's how you can check whether your artworks are backed up. For the iPad, you don't have to think, it backs up everything. For file management, Android OS is way better compared to iPad OS because the file management system is quite similar to desktop file management system so you are really familiar with that. All the photos and videos are saved into the file management system and you can find them from the folders and there's integration with OneDrive, Google Drive and Dropbox. You can also access the micro SD card slot and if you find that the features are lacking with the default file manager, you can always install third-party file managers. File management on the iPad OS is handled by the Files app, which has very limited features to the point that sometimes I want to tear out my hair. So for the best user experience with Files app, it's best not to use Files app, seriously. There is integration with OneDrive, Dropbox, and Google Drive on the side, uh, but many features are really lacking compared to the file manager from Android. For example, photos and videos are saved separately in the Photos app. Uh, they are not saved in the Files app even though photos and videos are actually files. And sometimes you cannot even play MOV or MP4 videos directly from the Files app. You have to import that video that you cannot play for some reason into a video app 
and then open that video from the video app. Battery life for both tablets is pretty good. So I have both tablets on for a few hours now and from the past few days of usage, I can get around 9 hours of battery life on this Samsung tablet. On the smaller 11 and 12.4 inch tablets, I'm not too sure because I don't have those tablets to test. But for this tablet, it's around 9 hours. For the iPad Pro, I can get around 9 to 10 hours with normal usage. Now, if you are using the tablets outdoors under the sun, where the tablets are running at maximum brightness, then battery life can drop down to maybe 4-5 hours. The next thing to think about is ecosystem. Like how well does this tablet work with other devices, whether it's from Apple or some other company. So if you already have an iPhone and Mac, maybe getting iPad is the better option because file sharing between these devices is pretty easy through AirDrop. Another thing to note is if you use iPad exclusive apps such as Procreate, in the future if you want to upgrade your tablet, you have to get another iPad because Procreate only runs on the iPad. How convenient it is to transfer file wirelessly from tablet to your computer will depend on which tablet you have and what OS you are using. So if you are using an iPad and Mac OS, that's easy. But if you are using an iPad and Windows, well, for me, I would just save the file into Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive and then take the file uh, from Google Drive or OneDrive on my Windows computer. For Samsung, uh, you can quick share the file to Windows, that's easy. But if you want to transfer the files to Mac OS, um, again, I would just upload the file to Google Drive or OneDrive and retrieve it from cloud storage. I think I've pretty much covered everything I wanted to say about all the features that may matter to artists. I did not talk about external wireless display support. You can use both tablets as external wireless displays and you can also connect the tablets to your computer and use this as a pen display so that you can draw with your desktop drawing software but the latency performance is not going to be good so it's better to just draw on the tablet with the tablet OS. I did not talk about Stage Manager and Samsung DeX which are both desktop UI for the respective tablets. I prefer Stage Manager because the UI is more similar to traditional desktop UI. Anyway, I have made a separate video for Samsung DeX talking about all the features. For Stage Manager, I, I just don't use it that much. If you guys have other questions relating to these two tablets, let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to support my YouTube channel, it's really easy. If you have the intention to buy either tablets or accessories, just make your purchase through the affiliate links that I have for you in the video description below. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye.